11 to 1 final. And for the Cubs, the end of the line, another successful season, a division title. And it ends right here at Wrigley Field as the Dodgers celebrate their first pennant since 1988. And that's how 2017 ended. No repeat, no parades, no shirtless Travis Wood. But that was then, and this is the offseason. With baseball's winter meetings coming up next week, I decided to make a video assessing the team's current makeup and what I think they should do to put the best team on the field in 2018. Maybe you agree or disagree. Either way, leave a comment and subscribe, and please like this video. Now, let's take a look at the Cubs' current roster. The Cubs have to figure out this fucking Russell Bias situation. Both are gold glove caliber shortstops, and it would be a waste to have either of them at second base. Baez has never gotten more than 500 at-bats a season, and you can understand that considering his undisciplined approach at the plate. You can't teach the amazing instincts Baez shows defensively and on the bases, and I think it would hurt the Cubs to trade him. Russell is coming off an injury plague season and domestic abuse allegations, so his trade stock isn't great. Ben Zobris isn't going anywhere at 36, coming off of a bad year and $29 million left on his contract. He either plays second every day, or you've got an expensive bench player. Speaking of the bench, I like Tommy LaStella. He gets on base, hits for average, gives quality at-bats, and plays all over the infield. Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo play third base and first base respectively. No problems there. For better or worse, Jason Hayward isn't going anywhere in right field. The offense he provides isn't worth the money he makes, but he's young, Great in the clubhouse and one of the best defensive outfielders in baseball. Evident with another gold glove last month. No one's going to take on $134 million, a 259 batting average, 11 homers, and 59 RBI each year anyway. Kyle Schwarber is never going to win a gold glove, but hopefully the guy we saw in the second half of last season is the guy we get in 2018. Cubs aren't going to trade him now with his value down, so you got to hope the left fielder plays better after his first full season in the majors and two years removed from major knee surgery. All signs point to Albert Almora starting in center field in 2018. Almora is already one of the best center fielders in baseball, but his issues handling righty pitching is what's kept him from playing every day. He showed signs of improving in the second half and postseason in 2017, but unless the Cubs want to hurt their defense by putting Hayward in center and Zobrist in right every day, it looks like Almora is finally going to get center to himself. Ian Happ hit some homers and showed he's not going to kill you in left or center, but it was pretty telling that Madden didn't start him much in the postseason. Does the switch hitting Hap get traded for pitching help, or do the Cubs hurt his progression by having him come off the bench? He's got to play every day. Right now, there doesn't appear to be a spot for him. John Lester is coming off a down year, but he's going nowhere, and you'd assume he'll be better, hopefully. Hendricks looked like the 2016 ERA leader after returning from injury in the second half last year, so let's assume that's what we get in 2018. Quintana will be in the rotation for a full season, and you can pencil him in for 200-plus quality innings. Jake Arrieta is gone, and despite not being the Cy Young caliber pitcher we were spoiled with pre-second half 2016, the Cubs are going to miss his innings, strikeouts, and overall good work near the top of the rotation. John Lackey was 500 with an ERA of around 4.5 and, and led baseball in homers allowed. You can certainly find someone better and less grumpy, but the innings he gives is underrated. Cubs should give their minor league pitcher of the year, Jin Ho Sing, every opportunity in spring training to win the fifth rotation spot. I mean, what can you say? The bullpen sucked and it showed in the postseason. Aside from Wade Davis and Brian Dunzing, Joe Madden couldn't rely on any of these guys to give a consistently good performance. Strope and Edwards had their good stretches, but neither excelled as a setup man or closer, and to say Edwards has control issues is an understatement. Justin Wilson forgot how to pitch after coming over from Detroit, Hector Rondon and Justin Grimm were too homer prone, and Rondon got non-tendered. Koji Urahara was just an arm, a very old arm. Mike Montgomery is better out of the pin, but he's insurance for the rotation depending on what happens via trades and free agency. Speaking of which... The Cubs have enough goddamn infielders, but they do need a veteran backup catcher for Wilson Contreras. There was much said about not having David Ross's clubhouse presence on the team last year. According to reports, he was the guy who held players accountable for mistakes on the field. It was like having another manager on the field. Not having a guy like that show throughout the season, and that's why I think a guy like Chooch Ruiz would be a great addition. He's around 40 and may not be the elite defender he was during his Philly days, but he's not going to get more than 200 at-bats during the season and would be more valuable as a veteran and clubhouse guy who's caught a World Series winning pitching staff before. Rene Rivera, who came over from the Mets, he did a pretty nice job. You don't expect him to hit as well as he did last year, but the pitchers liked him and he's a good defender. If only he or Ruiz were left-handed. 
The Cubs are set starter-wise, but Almora's troubles against righties is reason enough to look at some lefty center fielders for the bench. Prior to making this video, John Jay was getting offers from teams like the Mariners and wasn't coming back anyway, and Leonis Martin signed with Detroit. Speed is an element the Cubs could do themselves a favor to add. The team was very one-dimensional, relying on homers and finishing 24th out of 30 teams in steals in 2017. Gerard Dyson is a stolen base threat, bats left, plays good center field, and won't cost much. The Cubs are going to have to fill one, maybe two rotation spots. Arietta and his agent Scott Boros won six years, but they ain't getting it from the Cubs. Lackey says he's pitching in 2018, so the door is open there, although I think it's best they move on. Alex Cobb is young, decent, and has the Madden-John Hickey connection, but he's never thrown more than 180 innings in a season, and not too far removed from major arm surgery. If the Cubs don't sign Arietta, do they commit to you Darvish for six years and be tied to two old pitchers in Darvish and Lester years from now? He's barely younger than Arietta, but he's the top pitcher on the market. You can take Lance Lynn away from the Cardinals, but although he made 32 starts last season and had a good ERA, his strikeouts, walk per nine, and home run rate were a career worse. The free agent pool doesn't have a lot of guys under 30 with great numbers. Teams don't let them reach free agency. Imagine that. Unless we get shocked with a trade, I say sign Darvish and go with either Singh, another cheap minor leaguer, or Montgomery for the fifth spot. Aside from filling out the rotation, this is the Cubs' biggest need to address this offseason. Cubs brass are making a point of avoiding guys with control issues, and it's one of the reasons Chris bosio has gone. If you sign Darvish for big money, is there enough money to re-sign the best closer available in Wade Davis? He blew one save the entire season last year, and it happened near the end of it. There's no one on the current roster to take the ball in the ninth. Signing relievers is always risky. One year they're great, the next they suck. Edwards and Strope will be back, but can you expect Justin's Grimm and Wilson not to be festering turkey anuses in 2018? Reportedly, Addison Reed and Brandon Morrow are on the Cubs' radar for the ninth inning, but the latter has never closed full-time, although his lack of walks and overall numbers are intriguing, and he pretty much shoved it up the Cubs' ass in the Dodgers series in the playoffs. And Reed's not a championship closer. If the Cubs don't re-sign Davis, they'll start 2018 with their fourth different closer in three years. Brandon Kitzler isn't a strikeout guy or really all that great. Greg Holland is interesting, and his numbers would be better away from court, but if he wants Davis-level money, just re-sign Davis. And do you really want to trade Russell, Baez, or Hap for mediocrity like Alex Colomb, Kevin Herrera, or a banged-up Zach Britton? Fuck no. Just sign Morrow to a two- or three-year deal and add another quality arm like Anthony Schwarzak. And hey, Travis Wood is available. And he can hit and play the outfield. So fuck you, Otani. Bye. Wee.